What's up, guys? Welcome back to Bar for Life Report. Today, we're going to be doing our, a continuation of our uh, exploration of Two James Distillery Spirits. Today, we are going to be tasting Catcher's Rye. Catcher's Rye is 100% Michigan-grown rye. Uh, it is aged for a minimum of two years in traditionally charred uh, American oak barrels and retails for about 60 bucks a bottle. The Two James Distillery was opened in 2013, and it was just as Detroit, the city, was declaring bankruptcy. But what was kind of cool about what happened is, is that as the city was declaring bankruptcy, all of these artists kind of flooded into the city uh, because the rents were so cheap and they started converting everything into studios. And then those artists started pouring money into Detroit. Uh, and, you know, Two Dames Distillery was kind of at the forefront of all of this. Um, and then Detroit became not only an artist haven, but they really started to like kind of revitalize the city with all that money, which I think is pretty cool. Don't you, Mary? Yeah. All right, let's give it the old tasty boo. That's nice. So the first thing I get is sort of that nice kind of vanilla, a little bit of caramel. Whiskey that's aged in American oak really has kind of this appleiness to it, this sharp sort of apple cider kind of smell to it that I, doesn't matter if it's bourbon, doesn't matter if it's rye, actually some scotch that's in like first fill ex bourbon or ex whiskey, American whiskey casks also have that same kind of, kind of, I was gonna say flavor, but it's smell, but smell and flavor are so closely connected. It's kind of the same thing. So I'm gonna put that in there. Almost like a kind of a little bit bready and doughy. Tiny bit of spice, maybe a little pear. Definite vanilla. Almost like cookie dough almost. Oh, that's good, all right. Ooh, that's spicy. Oh yeah, that tastes like 100%, 100% rye. <laughs> that's, that's nice and spicy. It's got like a thin medium finish, if that makes sense. So like it, it kind of continues on your palate. It's still kind of going, but it's still, there's a thinness to it that I also detected in the, uh, in the uh, Japanese, the corn whiskey, the Japanese inspired whiskey that they do. Yeah, I like it, it's nice. That's my, uh, I think that's my tasting. I just think I ran through it all. Let's rate it. All right, rating system time. Oh, this is gonna be a really short video though. You know, it's like a, our rate, I mean, our rating system does promote it's a, a lot of conversation, so. All right, here we go. Value. $60 bottle uh, is on the upper scale. It's past 50 bucks. Um, there are some rise. I don't know. $60 as a price seems almost counterintuitive for rye. Rye whiskey is the traditional whiskey of America, even more so than bourbon, even though bourbon was voted America's native spirit in 1963 by an act of Congress. Rye whiskey was around first. It's what we were distilling when we had 13 colonies in the North and that's all we could, all we could grow. We couldn't grow corn. We didn't even know how to grow corn at that time. Uh, and that, and so uh, to me, this is like the, the spirit of America, but it's also something that I think like has become a little bit more expensive to produce. Rye is really difficult to distill. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a finicky, finicky grain to distill. Uh, and so it kind of drives the price up. But to me, the price is counterintuitive for the whiskey. For some reason, I think, I don't know. I mean, like one of my favorites, Rittenhouse is, you know, probably, you know, I mean, it's, it used to be like 23 bucks a bottle. Now it's maybe a little bit higher, you know, but it's still sub $30. Um, and then I know that there are some distilleries out there that are charging more. That said, it is a very good rye. And I would think that, you know, craft distilleries have to charge a higher price to be able to pay the people that they need to pay. So I'm going to give this a, I mean, I just, mm, spirits that are over 50 bucks, you know, it's just, it's a sticking point with me. I'm going to give it a, well, I don't know. I don't a four? Know. Ah, okay. I'll give it a four. I think that's good. I was like fighting with whether it was going to be four or five, but I, I think it's got to be a four. Availability. We know that that's not going to score. We well. already know from the last video that we did that the availability, I think we gave it what, a four because of just like shipping and availability. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not a widely available product. Uh, there are ways to get it, but it's not widely available. So Cocktail viability. 
Cocktail viability. I think this is very viable for cocktails. It's nice and spicy. I could see it making a very good Manhattan. I could see it making, like anything that calls for rye whiskey, this is gonna stand up in. Um, it's got a really nice flavor and it does what it's supposed to do for the category. So I'm gonna give it a uh, eight for cocktail viability. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, branding. Branding, again, this is really awesome branding. I mean, it's just like a really, it's not overly done. You know, I also think that uh, distillers are really kind of catching on to the style of the spirit and sort of the history of the spirit and kind of making the branding have a sort of an homage to that. Obviously, it's a, uh, the catcher's rye is obviously a, a reference to catcher in the rye. Uh, it's a, it's a nice it's kind of witty, right? Uh, it's a very well done label. Uh, it's eye catching. So, you know, it's, go it's good. I really like it. What do you think? It's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, 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 I'd maybe like an eight. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think it's like an eight. It's, it's just a very, it's just very, it's, it's very almost good. too stylized. I mean, it's like an artist rendering of like rye grain with birds and a, and like a, you know, kind of like a, a setting, a rising kind of sun, maybe a setting sun, you know, just on the, just based on the color of the, of the sun in the picture. Um, but it has like really nice kind of historic lettering, something that almost look, looks like an apothecary or something that you would, that you would uh, expect on a rye whiskey bottle. So I, I just think it's good. I think it's very good branding and I do think it's very eye-catching. That being said, it is a bit stylized. Yeah, it's a little over the top. That's why I it's, say It's it a bit over the top, but I, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna jump the gun here again on categories, but I think that the, the over the topness, right, which you get in the other bottle that we did and all, and all well, let's the get bottles. that is but let's rate it in this category first are we doing an eight right, fine i just but it one plays into the other like almost every time uh i say eight i say eight for uh for uh branding okay let's jump jump onto the fun factor fun factor this is what i wanted to get into so the fun factor is the over the topness plays well like it plays so nicely into the fun factor of the bottle it's not something that takes itself too seriously but just seriously enough to be taken seriously by a drinker if that yeah. makes any sense so i'm gonna give this uh, i'm gonna give this a 10 in fun factor yeah i mean if i was shopping through the store i saw this i would not knowing anything about anything I would be attracted to that bottle. You but, you would buy this for the label alone. Yeah, but you are you are addicted to Fun Factor. But there friend. might be, but that's what like it's a little over the top. So if I saw some other label that looked a little more classier, a little bit more uh -huh. subdued, I I picked that one over this one. But yeah, this one definitely would get my attention. Yeah, you oh, you at least consider it. Okay, I see that you're a bit of a snob. So maybe if something was a little you know a little classier or whatever, I could see you passing it by. But I I honestly think. You, my friend, from what I know about you, are attracted to novelty, and this is a very novel. No, it's good. It's yeah, a very no. novel label. It is, uh, right. and I think that it hits all the right notes too. I also think these little coins on every bottle um, are novel as well. Here, let's get a little shot of it. Um, I think that these are novel as well. Uh, they're a little over the top, though. Yeah. You know, like this is kind of an over the top thing. And not only that, but I would think that this is the that this is expensive to produce and put on a bottle. They spent money making this little coin for their bottles. Yeah, because you know? you've got to manufacture it separately and glue it on it. So yeah, that definitely an extra right. step. And you know who these people are on the coins? The two Jameses. The two Jameses, right. So it's the father of the two founders. Well, there's, yeah, the two founders of the distillery. The, they have their fathers, they're both named James. Uh, we already said that in the last video, so I'm gonna, I already repeated right. myself. But bottle go. design. Bottle design, we know, it's the exact same design as the last video. So what did we give it in the last video? I'm gonna stick with the same rating. Yeah, I don't remember. I think so, it was like a four in bottle four, design. Yeah. I think it was a four because it's uh, it's just like a little bit clunky of the design. It's got a really heavy base. Yeah, um, It's nice, but it's also like so much printing, so much printing. And then also Corktown on, on, like, it's, on it's, the glass it's and then over Detroit the, on the glass. It's over yeah. the top. It is, and it, I don't think it needs such a big base. It almost feels like a trophy. You know, like it's like a trope with a trophy base. You love me. You really love me. Yes, when you were holding <laughs> exactly, it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, totally. I just want to thank the Academy. <laughs> um, story. Uh, I mean, so, you know, this it's a good story. I like it. I, I think we rated it somewhere in the six. I think we rated it six or seven. 
Uh, I'm going to say six for story and uh, we'll just stick with that rating. Just write it down so that we know that we remember. <laughs> but it's a good story. It's a good story. Overall in category. Overall in category. Uh, this is very good rye whiskey. Um, the question is this, for overall and category, we're also taking price into no, consideration, no, right? No, that's price. So we're side. just talking about flavor profile, nose, palate, just all the normal, the, all the normal categories and like, how does this rate? Yeah, if it was a blind test, you don't know anything, just overall taste. No, I'm gonna taste it one more time. Price aside. I mean, that's good rye whiskey. It really, it's really, really good rye whiskey. I would give this, um, the thing is, is that here's the thing with rye whiskey, when you're making rye whiskey, it only needs to be 51% rye. The rest can be corn, barley, whatever. This is a 100 proof. I mean, there's a 100% rye. So the thing is, is that it can only rate against other 100% rye whiskeys, right? Because if you're cutting it, you're cutting other whiskeys with corn and barley, it's still rye whiskey, but it's not as, it's not gonna be as punchy and spicy. Right, it's gonna those, have different flavors. Right, but those will probably score lower than the ones that are 100% rye. Sorry. If you like 100%. Exactly, but this that's is the thing. This if is you what like you like. Yeah. You know, cause you can have high corn content ryes, for instance, that will be like silkier, a little sweeter on the palate. Um, I really like this whiskey a lot. Uh, I think it is very indicative of a rye whiskey. It's very spicy. Uh, it kind of, it, it doesn't hide its proof, but at the same time, it's not overly burning on your back palate. Um, as you, you know, it's like smooth, it's like relatively smooth, you know, in flavor. It will play really well in cocktails. I'm gonna give it a nine. Nine, wow. A nine. A nine. I'm gonna stick with the nine. All right. That was my gut, I'm going with my gut. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, and then the personal rating, category, whatever aside, just enjoyment of drinking. Nine, love it. It's good whiskey. It's really good whiskey. I like it a lot. Uh, price aside, I mean, here's the thing. I, I, even though I have preconceived notions about what things are worth and what you should pay for them, I'm not one of those people that will shy away from even spending $300 on a bottle because my idea, which is co totally counter most people in the comments section of our channels, either one of our channels, is that you will always remember the experience. You will never remember the money. So if the money is not gonna put you in the poorhouse, if you're not saying, okay, I'm gonna buy this whiskey and not pay my rent, I'm gonna buy this whiskey and not pay my bills, if, if that's not an issue, I'm all for spending large amounts of money on bottles because the experience is worth more than the money, in my opinion. Money is a tool, you know what I mean? All right, and workhorse. Uh, it's not a workhorse because the price goes against it being a workhorse. It's, it's not, you know, workhorse is supposed to be high quality, low cost and $60 for one bottle is not low cost. I would put that in the median cost range. So it, it is replaceable, but it's also one of those things that when you replace it, you sort of got to think about the cost of it. So I wouldn't call this a workhorse spirit from a price standpoint. That being said, I see this being used in a lot of different cocktails as well. It can be used in Co like cocktails that viability. call for rye. Yeah. And, and we could use this whole bottle very quickly. Uh, that being said, I like it enough that I kind of want to drink it just on its own. I don't I don't even need to put this in a cocktail, so. Right. So what, four? Uh, I don't know, I think it rates higher than that. Maybe six? Six, really? So this, this would, you start using this more than other ones? No, I mean, no, I, I wouldn't. I actually Because it's expensive. Because right? it's, it, it's expensive. So yeah, I guess cost, because it's like cost prohibitive for a lot of people, I would probably make it a four, yeah. Yeah, I'll make it a four. You're right, you're right. Because it's not something that is going to be used by, you know. There are very, there's a few rides that we use, but there are, there are the workhorse ones, like the Ritt, Rittenhouse and uh, Old Forester are the ones that we like use mostly on this channel. What did the, the catcher's rye score? It, it scored a 66 out of 100. 66, which is really similar to the uh, the uh, the Japanese homage Japanese whiskey. Yeah, that also scored. What did that score? Like a 60 something as well, right? Da -da, yeah, I don't 67, I think. Oh well, so they're all in the same range. These two are in the same range. All right, uh, I guess there you have it. I mean, like a 66, which I, I it's pretty good. All right, guys. Well, uh, yeah, I don't know. I guess Leandro out. We'll see you guys on the next. This is two of six, so we'll see you on the next one whenever we decide to release it. <laughs> if you show up. For the next one. If you even show up for the next one, that's right.